but it is the big the big news that that looks like it's going to happen because there's oftentimes you hear these rumors about oh they're going to expand uh, the regular season they're going to add a playoff team you know, like oh it might happen three years down the road right no this one could happen for next year yes it could um, so if you're not familiar with the news here it is Adam Schefter. Uh, wrote a story about uh, the uh, current CBA proposal that the NFL owners are pushing for. He said the playoff field in this proposal would be expanded to seven teams for each conference, while the regular season would be increased to 17 games per team and the preseason shortened to three uh, games per team. This is all according to sources from uh, Adam Schefter. Uh, but that's the idea. They want to increase the number of regular season games. Yeah. They want to increase the number of playoff games by increasing the number of playoff teams. So in this situation, the only buy would go to the number one seed yeah. in each conference. Um, I, I heard your thoughts on the surface. Yeah. I hate it. Okay. But I'd like to hear your thoughts. <laughs> My thoughts again. you hate or the whole thing that you're saying? I hate – no, your thoughts I thought were okay. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> I hate the – the idea. All right, go ahead. Let me hear you. Why? So, Why? What do you? What do you hate about? It? Because I'm a little in between on certain things, um, yeah. but I'd like to hear hear your thoughts. So, I, and I'm all for innovations and in, in new things. You know, I, I think we need more of that, honestly, right. in yeah. sports. Change up the rules a little bit, but it seems like we have the perfect combination of the regular season mattering right. for the first two seeds mm -hmm. in the league. I mean, that's a huge advantage. You don't have to play the first round. That's a huge advantage, and yep. I think it should go to the top two teams in each conference. So you have that, then you lose half of that. And the second part is I don't think, and we've looked through the list, and you did it on, on Pro Football, the PFT Live, uh, the teams that would have made it in this new situation that didn't make it in the previous years, there we seen last year it would have been the Steelers yeah. at 8-8. Eight and eight. Right. And you said you don't need to see Duck Hodges playing in the playoffs. No. No, um, it would have been the Rams at nine and seven. Okay, maybe a little more interesting team. Right. But all these teams going back to 2020, we have what? We have one 10 win team over on the AFC side. Yep. We have three over on the NFC side. Yep. Bears, Cardinals, Eagles. A uh, few years back, 2014 through 2012, they're just not that good. No. They're just not that good uh, of teams. And it just seems like we have the perfect situation now for the NFL and the playoff system. I don't think you need to mess with it. I, well, I mean, I'm with you. You know me. I'm a traditionalist that way. I mean, I really am. And you're right. I mean, we're, we're the, you know, the NFL is king of the American sports scene, and it's not even close, right? I mean, it's, it's not even close. And, you know, the last time I checked, I'm pretty sure football, I mean, uh, baseball, basketball, and hockey don't make as much money as the NFL does. Yeah. Those combined. So that just tells you where it's at. Now, you know, Okay, if they're going to make a change, like, I can live with this one to a degree. I can. Okay, I don't think it's going, like, too crazy. Um, I think the things – here's my first concerns. One, to what you just said. There's a point there where I want to go, like, are, are you kidding me this year? The, the, that wouldn't be good. I wouldn't want to watch Chief Steelers in round one. That's what we would have saw in the AFC, in the yeah. wild card, right? We've we got the bobbleheads right here. We got the matchup, yeah, right? No, okay. no buy for Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Right. They would have played not Ben Roethlisberger, but they would have played the Steelers. Yeah. And then over here, you they got played, Aaron, yeah. Aaron Rodgers playing uh, Aaron Donald and uh, the Rams over right. there. Which, okay, that has some intrigue to it. I won't lie there. That's like the Rams might have been one of those teams you could argue and go, oh, okay, maybe that would have been a better playoff with them in there. I get that. But the playoffs but also, are already a crapshoot. They, they are already a crapshoot. And now you're adding more of a crapshoot. And really, the biggest thing, I think, more than anything is, you know, yes, I'm worried about the playoffs being watered down, uh, okay? But the other thing, too, now here is a little bit of a good and a bad about it, okay? The bad is I do think this is going to accentuate the chances of the number one seed just ending up in the Super Bowl every year. I do. I, I think, you know, it's just going to make it that much harder for those other teams who are all going to be playing a game before the divisional round where the number one seed is going to be sitting there at home. And as we've seen here in recent history, the number one and number two teams with the bye week have had a great advantage. I mean, they're yeah. kind of dominating the playoff landscape the last five or six years. So I guess you that think scares a, me. You think that's a negative? I think it scares me a little bit. It yeah. does because, yeah, I just don't know. Listen, I like it because it keeps the regular season – very relevant to where teams have to win and keep playing and play well to get that number one seed. That buy is going to be really coveted, right? But also, I look at it in some years and go, okay, what if we have two teams that are 14 and two, right? And one team wins by a tiebreaker. Right. Man, what a 
What a like a, a man! You were the 14 and two, and now you're playing in a wild card game against seven seven and nine football team. Yeah. And whoa, you know, all of a sudden you lose two out of your three best players in that wild card game against a team that's crappy. Okay, maybe you lose that game, and now that crappy team gets to go on the next weekend, and we see more crappy football for them. Or your team does win, and you're not at full strength, and we see crappy football too because now your team's been hurt and players are banged up from a game that wouldn't normally exist. I guess yeah. those are my issues there. Uh, it, we uh, wanted to get the homies' reaction on this, too, and so there are some tweets out there, some reaction. This one coming from uh, Paul Simon Duffy saying, you'll have 13-3 uh, and three or 14-2 and two teams yes. playing on the same weekend as 7-9 and nine teams. Seems like too much of an advantage to the one seed compared to the two and three seed. So they echoed exactly what you said right there. Now, I would say that, you know, I'm not totally against giving more of an advantage to the to the one seed because you've earned it. Yes, right. Right. But but you're right in the case that say you got that because of a tiebreaker. Yeah. Of your opponent's record. Right. In the Something division. like you didn't play each other head to head and you're right. both 14 and two. Right. And it comes down to silly tiebreaker. You're right. Like right. The net points or division winners or conference winners. And then you get this huge advantage. Right. And the number two seed all of a sudden yeah is playing a seven and nine team and and we say this all the time right. And any given Sunday, anything can happen. Yes. And so even even if you are a dominant team, like the, the 49ers, when they're up 20 to 10 in the Super Bowl with seven minutes left, they win that probably nine times out of ten. But guess what? The one time it didn't happen, the Chiefs came back and win the, win the Super Bowl. So it's, yeah. I, I'm, 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 so it scares me. It's, it scares me. That it, does scare me. It does. Um, are there other tweets out there? I know we've got. Uh, You're gonna beat your team up too. I mean, even for the Super Bowl, that's where I get I get worried about it. Let's just say the games. number three seed, well, yes, yeah. does make it in, or the number two seed does make it to the Super Bowl. You know, I think you're increasing your chances of not seeing the best Super Bowl product either. You know, so yes, I would like things to stay the freaking same way they have been. All right, yeah. that's where. Why, why are we messing with this? And you know, to the point of like, you know, we talked about it already, but you can go through most years. All right, and you can just look at it and go, Damn, I don't want to see that number seven seed. I look at most years and go, I didn't really want to see that number six seed play a playoff game. I mm -hmm. never thought there was any chance they could win a Super Bowl or go to the Super Bowl. I mean, even this past year, how many teams did we legitimately think could go to the Super Bowl when we entered the playoffs? I mean, I think it was a very rare view, I think, yeah. to me. Now, here on this list, and if anybody's watching on uh, our YouTube page. Here's the would-be number seven the seeds. The would-be number seven seeds, which I just want to make everybody clear here. The would-be number seven seeds, the NFL is just angling to get this to be the would-be number seven and eight seeds somewhere uh -huh. in the future. Okay? Then we're going to have, like, seven and nine football teams make the playoffs. All right? And I don't want to see that. All right? But out of this list here, and if you're watching on YouTube, right, all right, there's, like, you know, not a lot of these teams jump out to me other than, like, maybe the Steelers of 2018 of 9-6-1 and one, where I go, ooh, if that team got in the playoffs, that could have been a little scary, right? Because they went through some crazy stuff that year in the 2018 season with Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell being out, and they had a few injuries here and there. But they were a team where I looked at the end of the year that kind of came together, and I went, ooh, remember they beat the Patriots late yeah. that year? They lost a really tough game to the Saints down in New Orleans where Juju Smith-Schuster fumbled the ball late in the game. That is one instance, but it's few and far between because a lot of the other years I just go, sorry, you know, these teams are not quality football teams, all right? You know, another one that jumps out to me is that, that 2010 uh, New York Giants team. That'd be another team, you know, and especially because it was Eli Manning and he already showed that they could win as a sixth seed when right. they, you know, 2007. But that's where I worry about it. And then I also worry that they're just doing this to position themselves for an 18 playoff. And that's where I get really scared. You know, because then you're going to have yeah. teams like the Denver Broncos, who were seven and nine this year. I mean, they're going to the playoffs. You're, you, you, I, I just, they weren't a playoff team. I'm right. sorry. They did a great job. They rebounded well in the second half of the season, but not a playoff team. They're and, not a playoff team. But then you you match them up in Baltimore, right? Yeah. Against uh, against the Ravens, and you, they shouldn't even be there. They're going to have a chance in that game. You know, you know what I mean? It's like we saw with Baltimore lost yeah. to Tennessee, and right. we didn't think that was going to happen. No, but I mean, they're, you're they're right. still going to have a happen. chance in that game. But um, Tennessee is a team that was on fire the second half of the year. That's and true. really in the position they were in their position, they were there because, to me, the biggest reason is they were just not willing to pull the trigger to go to Mario to Tannenhill quick enough. Yeah. And I think if they did that, I think really the Tennessee Titans are not a team that is 9-7. and seven. I think they would have been an 11-5, and five, at least a 10-6 and six football team if they had made that switch a little earlier. So 
I don't know. It's interesting either way. What I think ultimately NFL wants to do, and I've heard this from people, substantial people in the NFL, what they want to do is make it 18 games, regular season, make it eight teams per conference to get into the playoffs, 16 teams total, and they want to have the Super Bowl this past weekend. That's the big thing I've been told by people. That so that you have, you have President's, President's Day, Day weekend Super Bowl yeah. to where nobody works on Monday and it can become this huge, extravagant, big holiday thing. Now, the NBA All-Star is not going to be very happy about that, yeah. but I think that's ultimately what the NFL has in mind here. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't, yeah. thought, I hadn't thought of that before. Yeah, that's... So that's you, you move it like two... Well, that's almost like three extra... It's guess, three extra weeks, which, I mean, if you add an extra playoff game and an extra regular Regular, we're adding two extra regular season yeah. games. It's going to fit there. Exactly. It's going to fit exactly the way the formula is right now. And there are people that say more is better. You know, uh, I love football, so more is better. I mean, but there's a limit where it's not better. No. You know, because there's no, no one in the right mind thinks that if the NFL regular season was 40 games, that'd be better than what we have now. No. You know, because there's, there's an amount where it's just like the reason football is so popular is because it is so infrequent. Right. And you get only 16 times in the regular season to go watch your team eight times at home. Yeah. And it's special. Yes. And I think that is why NFL has got its place in the, the sports hierarchy right now of the unquestioned number one. Yeah. And so you just you mess with it, you're 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 in dangerous territory there. Yeah. For the, for the NFL. You know, go back to like what Mark Cuban said. You know, what does he say? Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. Yeah. And I feel like that's where we get a little. Although since he said that, I feel like the NFL it has gone gotten up even, even more, the right? Gone, right. Gone it went through a a one bit. little tough period during the election year, but other than that, you're right, it's gone up. But yeah, I, I worry about that too. A, a watered down product, certainly. And with extra regular season games and now an extra playoff game, I just worry about hey, it could lead to you know, subpar matchups in the divisional yeah. playoff game. It could lead to teams being less than full strength at the AFC, NFC championship But game here's weekend. the thing, too. Here's why yeah. it'll probably go through. Right. According to Schefter, the players like it. Well, I can more understand money. them like this than the more, more than the of an regular opportunity. season game. Right. Yeah. Well, it's playoff. It's more money. It's only one more game for, what, two teams. Mm -hmm. Right? Am I, uh, yeah, two teams. Right? Or no, it's going to be four teams ultimately because that number two seed is going to have to play. So it's going right. to be one. So, okay. And I think players can get, you know, they can, they can wrap themselves around that idea because it's the playoffs. It's not a guaranteed fact that you're going to have to play an extra game, right? And it's the playoffs and it's a chance to improve your legendary status and have a chance to get a Super Bowl ring, which is everybody's goal in the NFL. We got one more tweet. Do we have the one from Scott Walker? Do what up, have, Scott do Walker? We have that what one up, available here? What up, Scott I thought Dub? that was an interesting point here because a lot of the tweets were, uh, I feel like the reaction to this has been uh, not unanimous, but you know, 90% against uh, wanting to expand. But Scott Walker brings up an interesting point. He, he tweeted this at us. He goes, prior to the four-team expansion in 2002, 12 teams made the playoffs. That was around 43%. Then they expanded to 32 teams, kept it at 12, making it 37%. By adding the two teams, you're going back to what it was prior to 2002, so basically 43%. So it's really not that big of a change. And he compares it to college football where he says only 3% of the teams get into the playoffs like it is in college football right now. So, I, I mean, that is an interesting counterpoint. Is yeah. that, you know, we kind right, of had around 43% before, and this just brings it back to those norms. But I, if it ain't broke... Don't fix it. Yeah. And so I think that that's what well, a lot Well, I mean, of right now you're point. talking about teams that are going to be like, you could, you could talk about a team who's in the wild card, 17, you know, playing 21 game seasons. I mean, we're going to get to 22 game seasons here at some point. And I know they're trying to make the league safer and do all that, but, but wearing people down and getting mm -hmm. them crushed a few more times a year is certainly not going to help out player safety either. So, yeah, we'll see where it goes. You know, I like it the way it is. I mean, that's a valid point with the numbers and the percentage that Scott Walker just made. Um, but, you know, and to me, it's a little bit of like, oh, everybody in the rec league eight-year-old basketball deserves a blue ribbon, so we all should do it. And, mm -hmm. and really, at the end of the day, I think what bothers me when it's just about money for the owners, and that's where I don't love it. 60 you know, they, of course, they want another playoff game. That's yeah. huge money. That's a huge money for, again, I like to explain this to people. It's huge for TV money, of course. That's going to be probably worth a billion dollars to have two extra play ga playoff games, all right? Uh -huh. And then the other thing is, the big thing is owners love playoff games because you don't have to pay, you know, uh, Russell Wilson his two-game, $2 million game check that week, right? It's just a flat-rate playoff check. Everybody gets $30,000 across the board. So they're not having to shell out some huge check to one of their star players. Yeah. They're getting to keep that this time. And that's where they kill it. And that's where, you know, I'm, I'm a little concerned with it. If you win 10 games, you get in. If you don't, you don't get in. 
They'd never do that because they want no. to. They want to sell it. They want to know coming into the year. No, this I know. Is a and you could argue game. that because nine and seven. I think we've had a few teams that have gotten to the Super Bowl. We've had a few that That's have true. won the Super Bowl at nine and seven. That's I true. think so. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.